Don't mind me, I'm just on my fancy new website. Websites have been one of the biggest tools and biggest sales tools that I've used in my business to generate the money that I have to get to where I am today. And if you're not selling websites, this video is gonna help you, hopefully encourage you and help you do that. So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is actually selling websites and making a huge profit and starting to generate reoccurring revenue as a creative from websites. All right, so you're probably wondering, why websites? Well, let me just give you the facts and the facts are pretty amazing. 252,000 websites are built every single day. That is an insane amount of demand. That website stat you've probably never heard before is from a website called Site Efi, S-I-T-E-E-F-Y. Uh, it's a pretty incredible number. When I saw that number, I was like, holy moly, over a quarter million websites, new websites are built every single day. Here's another stat for you. Over 1.8 billion websites are currently online. Now, I wanna make sure that there's a caveat here. Not all of those are active websites. What's considered an active website versus an inactive website, maybe a website that has gone stagnant, that hasn't been updated, that hasn't been changed, that is not actively being used versus active websites. About 80% of those 1.8 billion are not active, but the other 200 million or whatever that is, it's, it's an insane number, are still active. So there's a ton of active websites out there and there's a huge demand for new websites and it's actually quickly growing significantly. So if you're not capitalizing on this demand, it's right in front of your face. There's numbers right in front of you. You can't deny it. Websites are not slowing in popularity. They're only growing in popularity. In terms of a website, the other reason why you should be considering doing websites or selling websites as part of your business model. Websites are very good for information, they're very good for generating revenue, and they're very good for educating your potential clients. And so if you're not utilizing it for this reason and you're not offering this as a service, you're really only discounting and shortchanging your clients on the potential that they have in their business. A lot of companies are still out there that don't have websites or they have old outdated websites that need to be redone. And if you already have a relationship with them and they're already working with you, why would they wanna go somewhere else and work with somebody else that they will probably get taken advantage of when you could be the one that could take advantage of it and get a small piece of the pie for sending that work to me or to somebody else or hiring somebody in-house to do that for you. So this is a shining opportunity for my fellow creatives here to share and talk about you and if you have a website. I wanna know, do you have a website? Are you showing off your portfolio? Are you showing off the work you're doing? Are you telling your story? Are you using case studies? I wanna know down below, do you currently have as a creative a website where you're showcasing your work, your design work, your graphics work, your video work? So if you're gonna go out and sell websites, you need to have a basic understanding of what you're selling. Now, as part of what I do is I educate my clients on websites and I can go really, really deep on this. So let's get to the next part, which is the basics. So you need to understand the basics if you're gonna sell websites. And websites are just a huge gold mine for you as a creative and there are some things that you need to understand. So let's get to those. There are four things that I wanted to talk to you guys about and the first one is understanding that a website is usually built on what's called a CMS, which stands for Content Management System. This is where you're managing all of the content of your website. This is where you can install apps and plugins and other things that can help you do live chat and reoccurring billing and affiliate sales and checkouts and all the different things that you wanna do, abandoned carts. And so you really need to understand what platform you're going to use before you sell it. So for myself, we build 90% of the websites that we have, probably even 95 on WordPress. WordPress, I've mentioned before in the past, is an open source platform, which means there's all kinds of developers and programmers and coders building website themes, building website plugins, building website apps. They're doing all kinds of stuff and it gives you massive flexibility, massive scalability. And so this is important to know. WordPress is probably the king of all the websites. In fact, just to kind of put some numbers to it, there are 455 million WordPress websites. Yes, 455 million WordPress websites. That's a lot more than any other platform that's out there. Now, there are other options for you. You can do Drupal, which is pretty much a thing of the past in my opinion. I think they might actually be a part of the past. Um, but you can do other website platforms like Squarespace, Weebly, Wix. There's a lot of advertising for Wix and Weebly out there. But some of these other websites, platforms are great. They're simple, they're easy to use. If you're not experienced with web development or web design and you wanna build a website yourself, but you have some really good creative abilities and you wanna learn it, this is where I would start with. Get yourself 
get your feet wet and start with a WYSIWYG builder. And that's what these are called. So there's a difference between WordPress, which you can download a custom theme, but that you're gonna have to custom code it. There are some that have visual builders, but none of them really have the same type of WYSIWYG is the kind of the keyword or the, the term used in the industry, drag and drop builders. Drag and drop builders are really easy to use. Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, they all use those. So this might be something you wanna consider. If you want just a simple mom and pop type website that's not gonna very, be very big or gonna scale, and you just need something basic and you wanna get it up quick, go with a WYSIWYG, Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, one of those will work fine. But if you really wanna take it up to the next level, you wanna scale, you wanna expand, you wanna do a lot more, you wanna have some more flexibility and growth potential, you definitely wanna consider WordPress. Now the next kind of website that you can build and you're gonna need a developer and a coder to do this is a static website. Now that's gonna require some HTML, probably maybe some PHP, but probably for sure some CSS, HTML and CSS are gonna be needed for that and you're gonna have to custom code it and make sure that you find somebody that can do it right. These can load very quickly because there's no content management system on the back end. It's just the static HTML and CSS that are pulling from the server. So this is something that I want you to take into consideration. Being able to know what type of website your client needs is really, really important and even what you need. If you're just looking for a basic portfolio site, just go with a simple WYSIWYG. If you wanna be able to expand upon that and grow, hit up WordPress and those, those are the two that I would strongly recommend. Hey, so do me a favor. If you're finding this content helpful, if this is the kind of content that you like, let me know. Drop a comment down below. You can pay me back for all the time and money I put into this video by just throwing a thumbs up on the video. Man, it's really easy. Throw a subscribe, hit the subscribe on there, hit the bell so you get notified when I make other great content. I wanna keep making content that you need and so without hearing back from you, I'm kind of in the dark. I got a little bit of analytics but it really doesn't tell me a lot so I need to hear from you guys and I am look forward to seeing those comments. All right, so let's wrap it up with phase three which is pricing and selling websites. Now this is a key, you gotta understand this. There are some really key elements to pricing and selling websites. A website is much more than just the WYSIWYG or WordPress site. There's a lot that goes into it. They need to be fast, they need to be SEO friendly, they need to be having good user experience and actually take the customer on a journey. They need to be easy to contact, they can't be cluttered. There's so many things that go into a website and this is why I want you to get experience and why I'm making this video is to understand that building a website is not just like, oh, let's just throw somebody 500 bucks real quick. There's a lot of time that goes into a website, including security, that needs to be done right. So if you're gonna sell it, you you want to sell it for the right price. Now the first lesson I want you to know is you need to sell the value and I want to say market value of the website versus price. Again, market value versus price. What are other people paying for quality websites? Do some shopping, call some competitors, call some people around town, ask for quotes, get some prices and see where people are coming in at. Don't go to Craigslist, don't go to Fiverr, don't go to those cheap websites. Get some realistic market value type websites because that's the type of business that you're trying to build and you wanna make sure that you get some market value prices of where you should be inside your price ranges because websites can range anywhere from the low side of $1,000, that's the really the cheapest that I've ever built one for, and as high as 50,000 or even more, six figures, seven figures. So you really gotta know that, like when people come to you and say, how much for a website? That's an impossible question to answer without getting a ton more information. That's like, how much for a car? Well, is it a Tesla or is it a freaking Kia? And that's a really good way to determine whether you, what type of website they want. Are you looking for a Kia? Or are you looking for a Tesla or a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce? Like what kind of website are you looking for in comparison to a car? This is a really good way to determine that. You never wanna sell the website just on price. You wanna understand the market value of what it is that they're looking for and the type of client that you're working with. All right, the second lesson that you need to know when selling a website is fixed bid versus hourly. You never wanna sell hourly. You are having competitors that are going up against you that are working for much less money per hour. And if you get into that price point and price battle, you're gonna lose and you're not gonna end up making the money that you want. So you need to have a fixed bid. So if your actual hard cost for a web developer to come in and it's $1,000, you may wanna say, hey, I need to make $2,000 on this. So you wanna mark it up and sell it for $3,000. Maybe you wanna include some additional features or maybe you think it's gonna take a little bit longer so you sell it for 3,500 and you throw in an extra $500 for unforeseen things that come up. That's just part of the business, that's part of marketing, that's part of web design, that's just part of scope creep and this is something I wanted to talk about because this is the last point that I wanted to make when it comes to selling websites is getting a very, I'm talking very clear definition of your scope of work. How many pages? 
how long are those pages? Like as far as like how much content is on that and how many words per page is there gonna be? What's the security? Um, are you doing SEO on those pages? Are you gonna be doing ongoing marketing on that? Is there any e-commerce? How many images are gonna be on those pages? Who's supplying the content? Are you supplying the content? Are they supplying the content? Are you supplying the images? Or are they supplying the images? There's so much. What about videos? Is there gonna be videos on the website? Are there gonna be other plugins? There's so many variables. You need to get a very clear, clearly defined scope of everything that that customer needs on the website so that nothing is left out and then they go, oh, by the way, I needed this. Well, that should just automatically be included in the price, right? That just comes with it. No, that wasn't defined in our scope. So this is something you need to communicate, you need to be very clear about, and I really wanna encourage you, don't let yourself experience scope creep. Be very clear about the documentation you put together when you send a proposal of everything it includes and what it doesn't include. Second thing what it doesn't include. This is also important to list of what you're not including in the scope of work. So make sure you put together a clear scope of work along with your proposal and your agreement and you'll be really good to go there. So that's in a nutshell what I got for you guys today. I'll make more videos on the dynamics of websites in the future and I've done some in the past that you can go watch, but I'm really grateful that you came to watch this today. I hope it was really helpful. I look forward to hearing you guys, hearing from you guys in the comments and make sure you check out the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook and I'll see you guys on the next one. My name is Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.